In any distributed system, we deal with a lot of client requests. And if these requests flood your server all at once, it can cause slowdowns or even outages. Rate limiting and throttling help maintain system stability by controlling the flow of incoming requests. In real-world scenarios, most engineers rely on external tools or API gateways, which I have covered in detail in my previous videos. In this video, we'll do a deep dive and walk through the algorithms and data structures you might use if you were about to build these features from scratch in Java. So let's get started. Rate limiting sets a cap on the number of requests a client or user can make within a specific time window. For example, you might only allow say 100 requests per minute per user or 1000 requests per minute for an entire application. Now if a client tries to exceed this limit, they get blocked or receive an error response, typically a 429 too many requests status code. This ensures no single source overwhelms your system. Imagine you have a login service. You don't want a brute force attack hammering your server. A rate limiter here could allow just 5 attempts per minute. Anything beyond that is immediately rejected. Throttling is about slowing down the rate of request, either by delaying them or limiting processing resources, rather than outright rejecting them. It's especially useful if you want to maintain service availability but need to manage load more gracefully. So if your API is handling more requests than usual, you can enqueue excess request. The server processes them at a steady rate instead of rejecting them right away. Users might see increased latency, but they don't get blocked outright. And by the way, you can use dynamic throttling or adaptive throttling. In dynamic throttling, you adjust throttling levels based on real-time metrics like CPU load, memory usage, or queue length. If resources are under strain, you throttle more aggressively. In adaptive throttling, it incorporates machine learning or advanced heuristics to predict spikes and adjust throttling before the trouble occurs. So, Rate limiting is ideal if you want to enforce strict usage policies, like fixed quota for free versus paid tiers. And it is straightforward. You hit the cap, you get denied. Throttling is great for preserving user experience under heavy load. So instead of slamming the door, you slow request. And it's often used when you still want to serve all traffic, but just at a controlled pace. So in order to implement them, you choose your strategy. You decide whether strict capping, which is rate limiting, or controlled slowing, that is throttling fits your business needs. Often, systems implement both. First try throttling and then they move to rate limiting if capacity is still threatened. Many frameworks offer built-in rate limiting middleware. For example, in Node.js you have packages like express rate limit. In a microservices architecture, tools like Istio or Envoy have built-in policies for rate limiting and throttling. One of the common ways to implement rate limiting is through API gateways, which I have discussed in the past on several occasions. You can check it out in my playlist in description. You might store request counts or tokens in Redis to handle distributed environments and use a consistent approach so all service instances share the same limits. And finally, you monitor and tune. You implement observability, frag metrics like request rate, errors, and latency, and adjust your limits as usage patterns change or your infrastructure scales. Let's explore the difference between rate limiting and throttling with practical examples using two common algorithms. And guys, by the way, I have covered these algorithms in detail in my previous video, so do check out my playlist in the description. Here, we have a simple Java program which demonstrates how each of these algorithms work to implement rate limiting and token bucket. First, let's dive into rate limiting with a token bucket algorithm. Imagine a bucket that holds tokens. Each token represents permission to make one request. Tokens are added to the bucket at a fixed rate, and if the bucket is full, extra tokens are discarded. When a request comes in, the program checks the bucket. If a token is available, the request is allowed, and a token is removed. If the bucket is empty, the request is denied. In our example, the bucket can hold up to 5 tokens, and one token is added every second. And if too many requests come in quickly, they will be denied once the tokens run out. Next. Let's move to throttling using a leaky bucket algorithm. So picture another bucket, but this one leaks water at a constant rate. So when a request comes in, it's treated like adding water to the bucket. If the bucket isn't full, the request is allowed and a bit of water is added. If the bucket is full, the request is delayed or rejected. But here, the bucket ensures requests are processed at a smooth, constant pace, 
even if lot of requests come in at once the system slows down the rate of processing to prevent overload in the code here we simulate 10 requests with a small delay between them for the token bucket you will see burst of requests being allowed initially but as tokens run out access requests are denied for leaky bucket requests are processed at a steady pace effectively smoothing out burst let's break down the main method step by step to see how we test rate limiting and throttling first we start with rate limiting using the token bucket algorithm here a bucket holds up to 5 tokens and a new token is added every second each incoming request consumes only one token so if the token is available the request is allowed if the bucket is empty the request is denied upon running we see that request 1 through 6 were allowed because tokens were available in the bucket but from request 7 onwards all were denied because the bucket ran out of tokens and the token replenishment couldn't keep up with the incoming request rate this shows how rate limiting enforces a strict cap if you exceed the limit requests are outright denied ensuring the system doesn't get overwhelmed next we test throttling with leaky bucket algorithm think of this bucket as leaking at a fixed rate 1 unit per second so when a request comes in if there is space in the bucket the request is allowed and water is added if the bucket is full the request is delayed or denied again here the loop simulates 10 requests arriving every 200 milliseconds here the system processes requests steadily one at a time regardless of how many arrive even if there is a burst of requests they are handled at a constant rate smoothing out the traffic as you can see here request 1 through 6 were processed smoothly at a steady rate but from request 7 onwards we see delays because the bucket was full but the throttling mechanism slowed down the processing rather than outright rejecting them this highlights the difference throttling focuses on maintaining a constant flow smoothing out traffic burst by delaying excess request instead of denying them the key takeaway rate limiting is strict it rejects request beyond the limit throttling on the other hand is forgiving it slows things down to ensure steady processing both strategies are essential for managing traffic but their use depends on your specific requirements